Good evening. Welcome to Northwest Tonight with Annabelle Tiffin. Our top story, life for Brianna's killers, as it's revealed one of them was transferred to her school after drugging another child. And I think that as a parent, you would never imagine that another child that your child's met from school would be capable of doing such a thing. Scarlett Jenkinson will serve at least 22 years, Eddie Ratcliffe 20 for her horrific murder. You both took part in a brutal and planned murder which was sadistic in nature and where a secondary motive was hostility towards Brianna because of her transgender identity. We'll be live from Manchester Crown Court. Also tonight, Cheshire's Police and Crime Commissioner faces calls to quit over comments about short skirts. It's totally inappropriate to comment on, A, the clothing um, that young girls are wearing, but also, in a way, victim-blaming them. Do you love where you live? Harry does. So where has he invited us to visit? And it's been a tale of two halves today. For many, skies like this, grey overcast. For others, beautiful spells of sunshine. How are we set for the weekend? Join me at the end of the programme. I'll give you all the details. Brianna Jai was lured to her death by someone she thought was her friend. Today, a judge named her killers for the first time. Scarlett Jenkinson and Eddie Ratcliffe were told they'll serve at least 22 and 20 years for her brutal murder. The BBC can now reveal that Scarlett was transferred to Brianna's school after drugging a younger pupil. Well, our reporter Katie Barnfield has been following this case and she joins us now from Manchester Crown Court. Katie, tell us more about what the judge said today. Well, Annabelle, the judge, Mrs Justice Yip, told the court earlier that although Brianna's life was short, she made a big impact and acknowledged that her family's loss was unimaginable. She said the sentencing of the two teenagers responsible for her murder was complicated because although they are children, the murder was brutal. She said Scarlett Jenkinson had enjoyed her part in the killing, that she told stories and blurred the lines between fantasy and reality, meaning she couldn't believe anything that she said. She she said she had enlisted Eddie Ratcliffe, who supported and encouraged her, and that he displayed hostility towards Brianna because of her trans identity. Scarlett Jenkinson, she said, was motivated by a deep desire to kill. One of the most difficult aspects for Brianna's family, though, was knowing that she was someone Brianna considered a friend. Scarlett, this is what I've got to say. Yeah. At this moment, because the information I have received. You were under arrest on suspicion of murder. At the moment, was... Brianna Jai's friend was arrested for her murder. How come I'm a suspect? How come you're a suspect? Because I'm the last person at sea in the I don't know. Scarlett all Jenkinson all was just 15 all years all old when she and her friend Eddie Ratcliffe you, Eddie? planned and executed Eddie, Brianna's murder, brutal right? killing, luring her out and attacking her with a hunting knife in the middle of the afternoon. At the time, it felt like it was the worst possible. Um, a scenario that could have happened. It was the worst possible person that could have done it to her. I felt that I could trust Scarlett because Brianna clearly trusted her as well. And I think that as a parent, you would never imagine that another child that your child's met from school would be capable of doing such a thing. On the 11th of February, 2023, Brianna Jai's body was found here in Culture's Linear Park in Warrington. She was discovered by dog walkers on this path, about half a mile from the entrance to the park, close to this bench. She had been stabbed 28 times. Brianna, who was transgender, was described by her mum as witty, fearless and strong. But she was also vulnerable, suffering from severe anxiety, something her killers took advantage of. After the pair were arrested, their phones were seized, what investigators found on them was chilling. Thousands of WhatsApp messages discussing plans to murder Brianna and other children. If we can't get him tomorrow, we can kill Brianna. I want to stab her at least once, even if she's dead, just because it's fun. 
when I was in the trial, I could see the way that they were both behaving and I could tell that there was no remorse and um, of regret. Beforehand, I felt like that maybe there would be some form of rehabilitation, but clearly it was calculated and I completely lost any sympathy that I had for them. Brianna had never met Eddie Ratcliffe, marked here with a Y, before he turned up at the bus stop with Scarlett Jenkinson to meet her on the day they were to kill her. But she and Jenkinson, who's marked with an X, had been friends for a few months. The three walked together to Colchester Linear Park, Brianna not knowing her friend was luring her to her death. Scarlett Jenkinson had first met Brianna here at Birchwood Community High School. We were asked by a local high school if we would take Scarlett um, on a placement due to the fact that she'd brought cannabis edibles into schools. At some point between November, December, um, their paths crossed in the inclusion room. In terms of Scarlett, there were no red flags. She came across as very polite, um, she was very quiet. There was nothing that indicated that this was going to happen. How did you feel sitting in court and seeing some of those WhatsApp messages and the content of them and comparing that to the person that you met? Yeah, it's, um, it's surreal. It's surreal. Um, and it, it really makes you question everything, really. The BBC has learned that Birchwood Community High School didn't know the full details of the incident involving cannabis edibles. In fact, Scarlett Jenkinson had given them to a younger child who didn't know what they were taking and who then became seriously ill and the police were called. Cultures High School told us they are now working with Warrington Safeguarding Partnership on an independent review which will examine the circumstances surrounding the move. Sentencing the two teenagers, the judge, Mrs Justice Yip, lifted the restrictions that normally keep child defendants anonymous. Both were given a life sentence. Scarlett Jenkinson to serve a minimum of 22 years and Eddie Ratcliffe a minimum of 20. She said Brianna's transgender identity was a factor in her murder. Scarlett, I have concluded that the primary motivation for Brianna's murder was your deep desire to kill. The messages reveal your fantasies and show your sadistic motives. I find also that you, Eddie, were motivated in part by hostility towards Brianna because she was transgender. Brianna's mum, Esther, says she doesn't want their families to be blamed. When the verdict came through, um, I saw how devastated the mum was, one of the mums were, and it kind of made me feel that that's how I felt when I found out the news about Brianna. Um, because it is true that we've, we've, all lost, we've all lost our children. Esther told the court she has never felt such grief as losing Brianna. She wants her daughter to be remembered not for how she died, but for the person she was. Katie Barnfield, BBC Northwest Tonight. Well, throughout the trial, the two teenagers could only be referred to as girl X and boy Y because of their ages. But today, the judge decided to lift the anonymity order and allow them to be named. This is something that happens in only the most serious cases, as Ian Haslam explains. It's unusual, but certainly not unknown. Scarlett Jenkinson and Eddie Ratcliffe's anonymity was lifted because their case was deemed so shocking and therefore exceptional to the general rule that children appearing in courts can't be identified. Sir Richard Enriquez prosecuted the killers of Merseyside toddler James Bulger in 1993. As 10-year-olds John Venables and Robert Thompson abducted James from a bootle shopping centre before murdering him. He says naming Brianna's killers is the correct decision. There is much, much good to follow if this, these cases are examined very fully uh, and the public know what went wrong in that particular family. Only then can we ask ourselves the question, could this happen in our family? Because at the moment, we don't know what went wrong. But not everyone's in favour of courts identifying young offenders. The naming of them and the shaming of them uh, is a barrier to rehabilitation. Um, we know that it, it creates troubles for their safety, 
um, in prison, but then also upon release, because these are children at the end of the day, um, and, and they need to be able to be given the space to grow um, and to, to move beyond their crime. Warrington Borough Council says it's now carrying out a safeguarding review into all aspects of the case. I think it's a devastating day, particularly for, for, for everyone involved, closely involved in it. For, for the town as a whole, it's something I need to say. It's a legacy that's going to be a poor legacy that's going to be going on, on for many years to come. The review will examine why Scarlett Jenkinson was moved to a new school where she met Brianna Jai after drugging a younger pupil with a cannabis suite. Birchwood Community High School has told the BBC it wasn't aware of the incident that happened at Culcheth High. Jenkinson later tried to poison Brianna before murdering her. So that information was out there, wasn't it? That will be a part of the review, what could have been shared, what should have been shared, and then learn from that to make sure things are shared more quickly and relevant information is passed on to, to the bodies that need to have it. How big a concern is it, though, for the council that that information wasn't shared? Obviously, it's a big concern for the council. That's why, we're, that's why we're going through the review, to make sure things like this don't happen in the future. Could the outcome have been different? Have we done something differently? Or have the skills done something differently? So we need to sort of look into that. It would be unfair for me to say, this should have happened, that should have happened. Next weekend will mark a year since Brianna died. Many people come to this park every day to enjoy the nature and the tranquility of the surroundings. It's peacefulness personified, entirely at odds with the horrific events here of almost a year ago, events which the community will never, ever forget. Everyone's kind of shed a tear over it at some point. People that live kind of close because it's such a sad thing. Um, and every time I go past, can sometimes just say like a little prayer and things like that. It's just ruined so many people's lives, of the whole community as well. You know, you, you walk along here, which should be a, a place where you can come and have a walk, bring your kids for a walk, and are you, are we, are you ever going to do it again? You know, it makes you think, oh, I'm not going to go in there because of what's happened. It's just awful, really awful. Ian Haslam, BBC Northwest Tonight, Warrington. Well, today the judge also paid tribute to the bravery of Brianna's family. Her mum, Esther, has now raised over £50,000 for her campaign in Brianna's memory, Peace in Mind, aiming to train one teacher in mindfulness in every school in the country. I've spoken at length to Esther for our documentary about this tragic case. The big cases killed in the park will be coming to the BBC iPlayer tonight. Annabelle. Katie, thanks very much indeed. Well, let's get some of today's other news now. And a woman who drove at her fiancé before dragging him more than 150 metres along a road has been jailed. Alice Wood had been arguing with her partner, Ryan Watson, after a party in May 2022 before driving at him three times. Wood was found guilty of murder last month, where she was sentenced for life with a minimum term of 18 years. A man has admitted firing an AK-47-style rifle at a newsagent, a cinema and a house in Liverpool. Leslie Garrett pleaded guilty to eight charges related to the shootings across Liverpool on the 3rd of January, including admitting possession of a firearm with intent to endanger life. He is due to be sentenced in April. A woman who was crossing a road on a mobility scooter has been killed after being struck by a lorry in Rochdale. Brenda Rostrum was crossing Spotland Road yesterday when the incident happened. A 32-year-old man was arrested on suspicion of causing death by careless driving but has been released under, under investigation. And a double-decker bus had its roof ripped off after it hit a tree in Greater Manchester. It happened on Wilbraham Road in Chalton at around 10 to 8 this morning. Greater Manchester Police say a cordon has been set up and there were no reports of any injuries. Now, there are calls for Cheshire's Conservative Police and Crime Commissioner to resign after comments he made about schoolgirls all wearing very short skirts. John Dwyer has since offered an unreserved apology. The comments were made during a discussion about violence against women. The county's police and crime panel has said it considers the matter closed after Mr Dwyer's apology. Well, earlier I spoke to the leader of Cheshire Western Chester Council, Louise Gittins, and I asked her what she thought. Um, I was I was really shocked to be honest and it's this sort of everyday sexism and outdated views that um, should not be said. Um, it's it's totally inappropriate to comment on a the clothing um, that young girls are wearing, but also 
in a way, victim blaming them for anything that could potentially happen to them. And it's just totally not acceptable this day and age. So is it uh, what he said or is it the context in which he said it that it was regarding a question, question about violence against women? Yeah, I, th I think it's the, it, in both respects, it shouldn't have been said. There is just no room for in, the, in today's society for somebody in his position. And, you know, with power comes responsibility to be making those sort of comments. I understand it was at a parish council uh, meeting. So it, it wasn't as if it was, you know, somewhere private. It was in a public meeting. There have been calls for him to consider his position. Do you agree with that? I, I do, absolutely. He's uh, he's leading um, the police force. Um, we need uh, young women in particular to feel confident in the work of the police force. And if the attitude at the top or apparent attitude is that, you know, it's your own fault if something happens to you because of what you're wearing, then um, that sort of um, confidence in the police will just, just go. And I know that the police force works so hard around this, and I, I wouldn't like to think it was reflecting on what they're thinking as well. There are police and crime commissioner elections coming up in May. You represent the Labour Party. Mike Amesbury, the MP, has also been calling for him to resign, also Labour. Mr Dwyer has apologised. Is this political? Absolutely not. I would have, whoever had said it, I would have, I would have called them out. Apologising is fine, but we could all apologise for for anything that we do. It's 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 words and it's actions that speak speak louder than words. Louise Gibson, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Well, I should say in a statement that Mr Dwyer apologised again for his comments, adding he acknowledged the understandable hurt that they'd caused and that they were wrong. He added he hoped his work and determination to stamp out violence against women and girls is demonstrated by his actions. Right, let's move away from news for a little while, move on to sports. Well, well, that's always newsy as well, it isn't is. it, quite honestly. Um, for our clubs battling relegation, yeah. the pressure now to pick up points really growing, really important. It always is, but now particularly. It really is, Annabelle, yes. Uh, Everton Spurs is tomorrow's lunchtime kick-off and with their appeal against that 10-point penalty uh, still hanging in the air, it's a huge game for the Blues, as is Burnley's against Fulham. The Clarets, though, will be both boosted sorry, by a couple of transfer deadline day arrivals. At the other end of the table, leaders Liverpool face third-place Arsenal on Sunday, with Manchester City not playing until Monday. Digging deep into the season, keep going, hold your breath, buckle up, all these kind of things, and go for it. That's what we are here for with these fantastic players. Manchester United also play on Sunday at home to West Ham, fresh from their dramatic last gas 4-3 win at Wolves last night. A victory that was extra special for United's Stockport-born match winner, Kobe Mainu, who's been with the club since he was nine. Marcus did a great goal. We know his qualities, we know what he can give to the team and uh, we are only focused on that. He likes to improve, he likes to, to get better and better and I'm pretty sure he's going to do it. Back to football, Preston North End have revealed a limited edition shirt in memory of Sir Tom Finney. It'll be worn by the first team next week against Middlesbrough to coincide with the 10th anniversary of Sir Tom's death. For every shirt sold, £10 will be donated to the Alzheimer's Society. A cause very close to Sir Tom's heart, that Annabelle. I can't believe it's 10 years. I know, I can't believe that. No, I thought that. I can't I'm believe it. I was surprised when you said that. Going back to darts, we seem to have a wealth of dark talents in this region, don't we? I mean, we've got Luke yeah. Humphreys, Luke Littler. It's incredible, isn't it? We really what do. We've done a few pieces, haven't we? We spend a lot of time in the I pub. <laughs> That's it. I tried to find out. I mean, there's, you know, there's the Academy at St Helens and, yeah. and so on. There, there's a lot of top-class darts being played sort of below the radar in the northwest. Several top players, like you say, Stephen Bunting, yeah. uh, Nathan Aspinall from, from Stockport. We haven't, don't often mention him. And then, of course, the two Lukes. Uh, yeah. There are lots of them. Dave Chisel as well. There are several top players. Um, and I think it is that competition that's been built in the North West. Yeah, it's good. It's good. It's Thank brilliant. you very much, Rich. Thank you. Now, last month, Kay Crewson launched Love Where You Live and told us all about why she loves her town of Marple in Stockport. Well, since then, she has been inundated, inundated even, with messages about where you love to live. And over the next few weeks, she will be visiting some of them. Her first stop, though... 
Well, let's find out. Nestled at the foot of the famous Snake Pass, this market town was recorded as a hamlet in the Doomsday Book of 1086. Famous for producing cotton, the town sits in a valley surrounded by incredible views. The name derived from Glot's Hop, where hop could mean valley and Glot probably a chiefman's name. You guessed it, we're in Glossop. Harry, you nominated Glossop because you love where you live. I so do. just tell me what is so great about Glossop? I think Glossop is the right size, it's human size. People all know each other. Uh, it's got lovely shops down the high street. It's a lovely high street. It's within a lovely location, right next to the Peak District, with people like walking. You need to be an estate agent, don't <laughs> yes, you, yes. for Glossop? Yes, it, it's just a lovely, lovely place. Real sense of community? A real sense of community, yeah. I've lived here 20 odd years and absolutely love it. Glossop is known for its rich textile industry, so it comes as no surprise that Vivian Westwood, the queen of fashion designing, was born just down the road. And she went to school right here in Glossop. The town is steeped in history. Parts of old Glossop date back to the 12th century, with many pretty stone cottages and a medieval market cross. So this is the heart of old Glossop, and it's the origins of Glossop before we became famous for producing cotton and we had over 41 cotton mills here. There was lots of big names that came out of Glossop, such as the Hillwoods um, and the Potters. So the Potter family um, went on uh, to be even more famous as Beatrix Potter was the granddaughter no of Edmund Potter. From Glossop? Who, right here in Glossop, yeah. Oh, I loved Beatrix Potter. Once upon a time, there were four little rabbits and their names were Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail and Peter. The Glossop Amateur Repertory Club formed in 1954. Three years later, they moved here and Partington Theatre was born. We are Glossop's only live theatre. Um, we put on so many productions. Um, we're here for people to come and escape their day-to-day -day life. We have touring shows, we have live music. This is a busy hub. It's absolutely manic sometimes. <laughs> I had a fabulous time in Glossop. Huge thanks to Harry and to everyone for showing me around. Now, perhaps you love where you live. If so, please do get in touch. Drop me an email, k.crudson at bbc.co.uk. You can see it there. Drop me an email, but tell me what it is. What do you love about where you live? And maybe I could come out and spend the day with you getting to know all about your home place. Now then, to the weather. Now, we've had a bit of a mixed bag today. So we started off with, look at that, beautiful. We did have a bit of mist, a bit of fog in parts of, uh, especially Cheshire. But it's here where we have the best of the sunshine uh, as we headed through today. Thanks for sending in that picture. Further north, for the likes of Lancashire and Cumbria, we did see more in the way of cloud. There were a few spots of rain from that thicker cloud as well. Thanks, Sarah, for sending that photo in. Now, for this weekend, how are we faring? Bit of a mixed bag once again. It is going to stay on the mild side. Uh, today we've got 14 degrees. That's double the daytime average for this time of year. It will still be breezy, though, tomorrow not as blustery as today and there will be rain at times uh, and it's going to flip-flop from the south and the north over the weekend and that's all thanks to this front it's a waving front cold front initially bringing some rain for southern parts tomorrow it goes then back northwards and we'll get uh, some further rain heading up towards Cumbria as we head through Sunday but again a warm front so we're still pulling in that mild air from the southwest so a mild end to the day, it's going to remain mild overnight tonight with an awful lot of clouds still out and about, thick enough particularly for the hills for a little bit of light rain, quite blustery and we are looking at around gusts of 25 to maybe 35 perhaps for the Pennines, a little bit stronger than that and we could also once again get some mist and fog, particularly for the coast and for the hills, but mild. 
down to about 10 degrees overnight. Now, tomorrow, variable clouds, sunny spells. There'll be a scattering of showers, few and far between as we head through the morning. And then here's that front bringing some rain across more southern parts. So for Merseyside, Cheshire, we are likely to see some rain. Best of the sunshine for the Isle of Man, for Cumbria, for Lancashire. Still breezy, not as blustery as today. And temperatures just notched down a little bit, around about 8 to 10 degrees. 10 is 50 in Fahrenheit. We will hold on to that mild air, though, through Sunday and Monday. But just take a quick look at next week. Next week, we are starting to see a return, potentially, of some cool air. A bit too far away to talk too much about it, but, yeah, we could get a return of some overnight frosts. But certainly not through Sunday. Sunday, we start off with an awful lot of cloud. We'll get some further rain. That rain starts to push up to the north as we head through the day. So brightening up for southern parts. And temperatures in that milder air mass through Sunday. Again, we could get 13, maybe 14 degrees for parts of Merseyside. Staying mild and fairly fine on Monday. But we are looking at the risk of some heavy rain arriving through Tuesday. Oh, thank you. Do you know, uh, when I was a, a local newspaper reporter, I used to cover Marple and Glossop. Oh, did so you know? Quite well, yeah. I'd never been to Old Glossop. Oh, it's lovely, and isn't it's it? it's beautiful picture. So can you let us in on where you're going next time, or is it secret? <laughs> no, send me an email, actually, and I'll yeah. come out. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> That's it from us. Have a lovely weekend. Bye-bye. Take care.